Welcome to Adventure in Faith AIF 2022, Breakthrough to Brilliance. This year's text is written by Simon T. Bailey and is entitled Shift into Brilliance. This week, we kick off AIF with a lesson entitled Shift to Brilliance, and our guest adventurer and speaker is Simon T. Bailey himself. Here to kick off this adventure on this journey is the UC Truth Ensemble featuring Shanice Phillips, Kemari Ewan, Akiria Smith, and Rudolph Tomlinson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. We're on a journey in faith. Yes, adventure in faith. Here we go. We're on a journey in faith, adventure in faith, adventure in faith. Simple song, hey! We're on a journey in faith, adventure in faith, adventure in faith. Come on, let's do it again. Uh. We're on a journey in faith, adventure in faith, adventure in faith. is a growing spiritual community and a center of empowerment. We are a member church of the Universal Foundation for Better Living. A dynamic association of New Thought Churches, study groups and satellite centers that was founded in 1974 by the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman in Chicago, USA. Our senior minister, the Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen, currently serves as UFBL president. Our worship celebration has begun. Please take a moment to share the link and invite others to join us in this experience. We hope that you leave a feeling spiritually filled with practical messages to live a better life now. The call to adventure. Arise, arise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. Be still. Can we all stand please? Can we all stand please? We are together again in the house of God. We are together again, right? Now we're going to sing it like we mean it. Come on. We, we are, are together, together again. again. Just praise the Lord. Oh, 
hands together. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And as we just center ourselves, being back together again. Just praising our God. Giving thanks for all the changes. Finding the good. And when we do, we find God. So just relax. And think of all the changes and how God has brought you through. Vocalists.
there's one thing in life that is constant, we know that it's change. We're changing, the world around us is changing, our circumstances in life, the people we know, we're all changing. But in the midst of that change, there is the wonderful presence of God. If we dare to seek God, even as things are ever changing. You know, one moment we feel pretty good. The next moment, the doctor is saying something to us. One moment we're hugging our friend and asking him, Les Campbell, it's time for a new skirt. And Les says, Rev, I'm on it. And the next thing you know, you get a call saying that Les has stepped into the next chapter of life and living. In the midst of it all, we must keep our eye on God, even as we manage the facts that are before us. And so we pray this morning, O creator of us all, we simply say thank you. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for each other. We thank you for this adventure. We thank you that you never leave us. We thank you that you never forsake us. We thank you that you are with us in our going out and in our coming in. We thank you because you are our sufficiency in all things. We thank you because you are the substance of all there is and therefore in reality we are never living an experience of lack. Thank you for being the limitless in what appears to be the limited. Thank you that your love never fails and that your glory is always being revealed if we dare to look for it. On this year's adventure, we remember the sacredness of every moment and give thanks for moments shared. We give thanks for the moments in which we cry. We give thanks for the moments when we remember to lift our voice in praise to you. And so when all is said and done, God, material things may fade. They may be devalued. They may be washed away through some of the elements or the weather system. But one thing is constant, and that is that God is always here, always. And so we give thanks. Take a moment and just be grateful. You are not alone. If you're in a hospital, you're not alone. If you're in a rehab facility, you're not alone. If you're walking, wondering what your next move is, I want you to know you're not alone. You are never alone. God is walking with you and talking with you and blessing you and sharing ideas with you and lifting you and pouring nothing but grace upon you. And therefore, we can say that all is well right where you are. And if you dare to know that, despite circumstances, there'll be a break in that condition. There'll be a shattering in that situation. And the glory of God, the brilliance of God, it will shine through. And you will perceive it and give thanks for it. And I pray that you will walk in it. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen. I want you to change me. Oh, change me. Change me. And now, introducing our adventure hosts, M. Maurice Manning and Nadine Newsom. somebody say it's good to see you today. Yes. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you for being here in the sanctuary. Thank you for being here to bless this, this launch of Adventures in Faith. Welcome and blessings to you who have joined us online. Let us know you are here by, by sending us some hearts, sharing if you're on Facebook, sharing, calling your friends. It will be a wonderful morning. We are the Universal Center of Truth, fondly called UC Truth, a New Thought Christian ministry and a member church of the Universal Foundation for Better Living, which was founded in Chicago, USA in 1974 by the Reverend Dr. Johnny Coleman. Our senior minister, Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen, is the current president of UFB, P, UFBL. Now, so many people who are here today, and those of you who are online, perhaps sometimes forget some basic tenets of our church. And so one of them we wanted to talk to you about was the statement of being. And just remind ourselves what the statement of being is. Our master teacher, Dr. Beaumont, reminded us that sometimes helps to have a refresher course. So, let's take it together. There is only one power, one universal presence, God, the good, omnipotent, the everywhere, evenly present spirit of absolute good. Today is the launch of Adventure in Faith. Are we excited about it? Right. This series of of, of services, we are going to be focusing and being intentional about elevating our lives in various areas. Do we remember what those areas are? What's next week? Spiritual week. And then? And spiritual week is what color? And emotional is what color? Oh my goodness. A, A plus, A plus. 
And after that, what week? Physical week. And after that? Relational week. After that is? What are the colors for physical? Physical is red. Relational, what color is that? And social is what color? Wow. And after social, what week do we have? My goodness, you guys are top of the class. What color is vocational? Purple. I heard, I heard a blend of colors. Purple. Purple. And after that is, and what color is that? Green. All right. So there promises to be something for everyone to rise, grow, and increase your experience on this journey and on your earth assignment. We know that every area of our life is in interconnected. Some are stronger, some are weaker. We are going to, going to prove that it works if we work it. So today's liftoff, folks. We're going to launch AIF, and we're using the Bible as our primary text, and our secondary text will be the book, Shift Into Your Brilliance, Harnessing the Power of You, Inc. And that's written by the world-renowned speaker and writer, Simon T. Bailey. Send him some love. Drop some hearts if you're in the Facebook group and invite a friend if you're online. Something good is going to happen Something's good today. in store. So if you are visiting us for the first time here today, please just stand and wave. Say hello. First time visitors, anyone here? We don't have to say anything. All right. Welcome, welcome to UCT. We embrace you. We love you. And our love ambassador will, will hand to you a complimentary copy of the Daily Inspiration. That's our signature publication. If you're first time online, type in first time in the chat. And everyone else online, shower them with some hearts and love. Now, don't keep this good news to yourself. If you have good news, you want to share the good news. So invite your friends to come and watch if you're online. And hey, if you're here for the first time, or if you have not been here for a while, welcome back. Come back next week. Bring a friend next week. Let's share this good news. Don't keep it to ourselves. Come on. We are at 15 Collins Green Avenue, for so those who don't know. So you can come back next week. Share with us. Now remembering we're in the month of zeal and enthusiasm, let us stand and take our affirmative statement together and with energy. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I, I enthusiastically, enthusiastically and unapologetically shift to brilliance. I am forever changed. I am one with God. I am one with all people. I am one with all life. I am one with the one. Thank you. Remain standing for us, please. We are going to go to our signature publication, The Daily Inspiration. And today's responsive reading is taken from the page 55 of that publication. It's entitled, Get Ready. And it's most appropriate for us as we head into AIF. So let's take it together. What does it mean to get ready? The phrase references an active process that includes internal and external preparation. Begin by taking a moment to consider whether there is something you have been wanting to be or do or to have. Do you have a dream waiting to be fulfilled? Do you have a goal accomplished? to be accomplished? The good news is that it is never too late to set a new intention and activate a plan to align with God's will for your next assignment. Are you ready to commit to take a courageous first step? If so, so it's, it's time, time to take, take that step, step by making a firm, firm decision to begin right now. now. Decision making propels you forward to take divinely inspired action following the recognition of desire in the soul. The triad of desire, decision, action affirms your power to ask and expect to receive your good in abundant measure. Yes, you 
you are more than worthy of all that your Father has waiting for you to claim. Are you ready? If so, seek wisdom in prayer, meditation, sitting in the silence, and spiritual studies. Then follow guidance received to move forward in faith. Your blessings are ready to manifest. Get ready. Let, let's take that last line together. If so, let's start from there. If so, seek wisdom in prayer, meditation, sitting in the silence, and spiritual studies. Then follow guidance received to move forward in faith. Make it personal now. My blessings are ready to manifest. I am ready. Yes. The scriptural support comes from Luke chapter 12, verse 40. You also must, must be, be ready. ready. Please remain standing as we take the UFBL statement set to music by the Joy Mechanics, Michael Sean Harris and Michael Holgate. God's will that every individual on the face of the earth should live a healthy, happy, and prosperous life. Now, we know that at this point you're accustomed to having announcements, but we have shifted that to the end. So, what I did there. And um, right now, we're going to jump into our joy song. So remain standing. And after our joy song, our senior minister will take over. This light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. joy song God is good amen God is good our inspirational reading is taken from shift your brilliance harness the power of you by Simon T Bailey and I want you to read it with me together a new future is waiting to emerge for you and your business. You will experience a shift in your brilliance when you crack open the door of your mind 
and expose yourself to a fresh wind of new possibilities that were created in the midst of uncertainty. Now we're gonna read that one more time, making the statement personal. So take a moment and look at it. So it's gonna say, it's waiting to emerge for me. And even if you don't own a business, your life is your business. Amen. You do know that, don't you? All right. Ready? Let's make it personal. A new future is waiting to emerge for me and my business. I will experience a shift in my brilliance when I crack open the door of my mind and expose myself to a fresh wind of new possibilities that were created in the midst of uncertainty. Amen. Thank you so much, Simon, for those words. God is good. Ready to have your mind cracked open to some new possibilities? Are you sure? All right. And what's so brilliant about it all is that they're all waiting for you to just open your mind because they were created in the midst of the uncertainties that you've already walked through. Amen? The uncertainties you've already come through. Come on, somebody. And we are grateful. Open our mind, oh God. Thank you so much. And now to share an adventure in faith, our board chair, Mr. Jomaine McKenzie. Or was that, was, were we gonna have that? So erase what I just said because we have gone high tech and we, we want all of it, don't we? And so I'll see you in a few moments. Hi everybody. They asked me to share and I have a, I've been, I guess, documenting some of my experiences over the last maybe 12 months or so, maybe from 2020, COVID time. Um, so when I decided to share today, they didn't make me. Um, I had to go through, <laughs> decide, you know, what, what do I share? What do I share today? So. Um, and then when I shared with Rev, um, she, I guess, got excited about the first part of the story, which is not really the main part of the story, but I'll share with you the first part of the story just, in, just, just because it inspired Rev a little bit. So, you know, during the COVID experience, Reverend Sheila shared that, you know, she was on a journey of, you know, being debt-free, consolidating stuff, moving stuff around and creating space so you can, you know, attract more income and once that space is there you can now do do new things and I accepted that challenge for for myself as well um, many of you may know that um, you know I went to school in the United States and then in England and I wanted a particular kind of experience so even though you know there was some scholarship money as a, a part of it um, I also didn't want to you know, be crawling on my feet through certain experiences. And at that time, it attracted, you know, some expenses that, you know, carried with me for a period and period and period. Um, and through COVID, I was able to eliminate all of that debt. I was able to not just eliminate that debt of student loans, I had no debt at all. I owed nobody anything and it was just an experience that and a wonderful 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 feeling of working the principles knowing the truth uh, make allowing the holy spirit to make the adjustments in me <laughs> and surrendering to the change required to experience something something new that's the first part of the story the second part of the story you know the, ins the inspiration continued no you know i have there's no space to do stuff and in the COVID experience, I was able to start a business, start a consulting firm. Thank you. Praise be to God. That's, 
also doing doing very very well and I was able to release a car and buy a car and one of the the experience of the car was just a little bit tense and tedious if those of you who've bought cars before especially buying a car from from overseas and I was waiting 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 and a friend said to me um, Jermaine have you prayed about this and I realized that I had not said one prayer about this car that was not like me not like you Jermaine but I was saying oh God doesn't care about you on a car this pretty car that you want to get from Japan or wherever it is and the day I went to spirit and I prayed for the car and the process that night the morning I wake up to the first notification that the car was on its way immediately I woke up to this notification so what the scripture says whatever you pray for in faith you will receive step two in that now this was July the car not reach yet <laughs> But the truth is, God is a God of order. God is not a God of confusion. God is not mocked. God planted the idea, so there must be the way, right? And I realized that I was not fully in alignment with all everything that I needed to do to make the car reach when it needs to reach. Because when the car reaches on the wharf, they're going to write me, and they're going to say, Jermaine, you need to come here. You need, to, you need these documents. You need this money. And none of those things were there. So here I am complaining that the car not reached, but I'm not ready for the car. So last, and this realization is coming to me months after. So congregation, don't let it wait months for you to realize that we just need to be in alignment with what God is trying to do. So two weeks ago, I said, yes, Jermaine, you need to put things in order, put things in place. And the minute I started to put things in place, and the day... A client messaged me to say, Jermaine, we have, you successfully completed this assignment. You need to pick up this check. All is ready. In that hour, I, I kid you not, in that hour, I was driving to the airport on Thursday morning to drop off a friend. In that hour, I got that message. I got another notification that the ship arrives in Ireland Friday at 1 p.m. Pray in faith, believing, and stand in alignment with what we are asking God to do for us. And I hope you enjoy this adventure. I hope you are open, 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 and receptive to shift into brilliance and to just surrender to what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do in through and as you. Thank you so much. We're on a journey. We're on a journey. We're on a journey. Wow. Being equivalent to that which you're asking for. Being prepared to receive it on all levels. And it works if you dare to work it. Amen. God is good. We are ready for our guest adventurer this morning. A man that I know is always on an adventure. An adventure in sparking listeners to be their personal best. Simon T. Bailey is a friend, and so I won't be reading the formal bio. He is a friend to this ministry. We have worked with him both on the Universal Foundation for Better Living level and the Universal Center of Truth level. We have partnered with him with corporations here in Jamaica, and this, in this month, it didn't work out. And I just wrote to him and I said, Simon, uh, what we wanted to do didn't work out, but would you help us anyway? W we want to purchase your books. We want you to be a part of this great adventure. And Simon, without hesitation, said, let's make it work. And so today, ladies and gentlemen, you have the pleasure of listening to this prolific author and Hall of Fame keynote speaker that has worked with Signet Jewelers, T-Mobile, uh, Stanford Healthcare, General Mills, Hilton Hotels, you name it, Sachicor here in Jamaica, 
An experience with Simon just goes beyond feel-good content. You know how you leave sessions and you feel good, but you don't have the practical working tools in order to keep the feel-good going. Amen. Simon's viral video posted by Gold Coast to Facebook has 90 million views. Can you believe that? Yes, we can. And three of his LinkedIn learning features are 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 also online courses and they reach professionals in more than a hundred countries. Congratulations, Simon. Recently, Simon became a certified Caritas coach leading with heart-centered intelligence. Serving on two unique boards, the U.S. Dream Academy and Orlando Health Foundation, he is a five-year board member that has 20,000 employees and over one billion in revenue. Recently, Cleary University, a 138-year-old institution in Holland, Michigan, rewarded him with a doctorate of science and business administration. Give him some love for his global impact. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and your friend, you've attended his workshops here when we've hosted him. You've read his books. You've heard him. You've listened to him on YouTube. And now he's here with us today. Dare I say, Dr. Simon T. Bailey. Give him some love, everybody. <laughs> Give him some thumbs up, some hearts up. Simon, oh welcome. Oh, my goodness. Reverend Dr. Schill, it's so good to be with you. Hello, family. I bring you greetings from Orlando, Florida, and it is so good to be with you. I would just love for you in this moment, uh, I want everyone to uh, sit up straight, sit up straight, feet flat on the ground, and I would like for us to just take a moment and take a deep breath. Let's inhale and exhale. So on the count of three, inhale, exhale, one, two, three. Awesome. I just wanted you to inhale the goodness of God as adventurers on this journey. I submit to you that this is the greatest moment in the history of the world to be alive. The reason you are here is because you are needed now more than ever before. And as many have experienced the vicissitudes of the pandemic, I believe that not only are your best days in front of you, but every person that meets you on this adventure in the weeks to come will begin to discover, not only have you shifted your brilliance, but you are on a journey to breaking through to live in a brilliant life. So, as you know, I've been talking about brilliance for the last 20 years. And for those of you who we are just now uh, meeting for the first time, let me walk you through uh, why shifting your brilliance is important. When I wrote the book, Shift Your Brilliance, I based it uh, on some of the research and the work that I had seen uh, from Dr. Howard Gardner, who is professor of education at Harvard. Dr. Gardner and his team of researchers did an interesting study over a 20 plus year period. And what they discovered is that children up until the age of four are operating at the genius level. The same group of children were studied in their early 20s and only 10% were still operating at the genius or what I call the brilliance level. And in their late 20s, early 30s, only 2% we're still operating at the genius or brilliance level. So the question that you have, like I had, is where did this genius or brilliance go? It didn't go anywhere, but it became buried by a society that says color within the line, sit down, give it back, you can't do this. And the more you continue to hear what you can't do, where you can't go and who you can't become, there is a neurological path in the brain that causes individuals to shut down. So what happened is you have this brilliance, you have this insight, you have this genius, you have this possibility that's in you. But what I've discovered, in order for you to really understand how to break through in your brilliance, it starts with number one, being in an environment where you are celebrated rather than tolerated. When you're in an environment 
that celebrates you rather than tolerates you, that environment invites you to be a vitamin, not just an aspirin. And when I understand how to be a vitamin, not just an aspirin, there will come a time where you will have a sense in your spirit that it is time to make a shift. When you have this sense that it's time to make a shift, I submit to you that God is inviting you to step into a new reality that he has prepared for you. Now, if you are taking notes, something that I want to make sure you capture, because this is very important, when we talk about brilliance, brilliance is your talent, it's your gift, it's your purpose, it's your why, it's the thing that you do better than anyone else. Brilliance is your unfair advantage. When you are in the flow, doing what you do, and I didn't realize this morning that Tamla Mann was there in Jamaica singing, uh, singing her heart out. <laughs> I so enjoyed the song uh, this morning, one of my favorite songs. But when you when when you witness the brilliance of her singing about change as she was leading, she was in flow. She was in the zone. She was in her anointing. She was in her gift. So when I am in my brilliance, I'm not threatened by anyone else. Because when you are doing what you do to the best of your ability, you are in your swim lane. So then the question becomes, Simon, how do I truly begin to break through to my brilliance on this adventure? So I'll never forget a few years ago, I was, uh, my wife and I, we were driving somewhere and I went 30 minutes in the wrong direction. I had missed my turn. Have you ever done that before? If you've done that before, we're all my honest people. Just put your hands up, right? You've driven, you've missed the turn, and you kept going, and you may have had somebody in the car that said, hey, you should have turned back there, but no, you knew where you were going. That was me. I was that guy. <laughs> and that's where you insert, bless his heart. <laughs> so I recognize after going 30 minutes in the wrong direction, I had to make a U-turn. And when I made the U-turn, I had to come back to make the right turn to get to where I was going. I submit to you, and I want you to hear what I'm about to say. This adventure that you are on in the weeks to come is about you making a U-turn. Now, normally when you uh, see the sign or you hear about U-turn, it's the letter U dash turn. But for purposes of this conversation, I want you to think about the Y-O-U turn. U-turn. How am I going to turn to begin to move towards brilliant living as it relates to spiritual physical, mental, emotional, financial, social. So U-turn. What's the U-turn for you? So let's, let's unpack this. In Shift Your Brilliance, one of the things that I invite you to really begin to think about is to get ready to experience the Vujade moment. The Vujade moment is when you have an inkling or a sense that it's time to move in a fresh direction. You will get up in the middle of the night, going to the refrigerator to get something to drink or maybe get a, a quick snack. And you'll discover that you were not really hungry, but there was a hole, H-O-L-E, in your soul. There, there was something that was calling you to a greater reality that wanted to emerge. And when you begin to pay attention to the Vujade moment, you will go in the opposite direction of what you've been doing. Now, when you hear the word Vujade, Vujade is the opposite of deja vu. That's right. Deja vu, been there, done that. Vujade, 
going there, doing that. So that means if I'm going to break through to brilliance, what is that moment where I am paying attention that as I look at all of the core areas that are going to be unpacked in the weeks to come, what's that moment, that tap on the shoulder, that sense that, wait a minute, I've got to do something different. So that leads me to the first big principle in the book, Shift Your Brilliance. And I'm going to spend some time here because I want to unpack this to just really lay a foundation for everything that you're going to discuss. Principle number one is to see differently. See differently. So how many of you have a mobile phone? Okay. And if you think about the phone, what's interesting when uh, the phone was created, and I'll use Apple as an example, when the phone was created, there were many phones on the market, just like the Apple phone. There was nothing special about the phone until they put apps in the phone. When they put apps in the phone, all of a sudden, the phone created by Apple took on a life of its own because the apps became the point of differentiation. When you think about the world that we live in now, just within the last 10 years, we have moved from a point and click world to a touch and swipe world. And in this touch and swipe world, there has been a shift by consumers as it relates to their choice, their expectations, how things are delivered, how quickly they come, uh, how things are paid for in a world of touch and swipe. It's a shift. Think about transportation. Within the last few years, uh, years ago, you can get in a taxi. You still can to this day. But what has entered into the market, as you are very well aware of, is Uber and Lyft and some of the ride share car services that allows a consumer, a customer with just a point and a click to call a car to them. It's a shift. It's seeing what everybody else can see, but understanding it differently because it's the Vujade. It's going the opposite way. If you think about food, and as we know, in restaurants, yes, you can order takeout, but even now, because of the pandemic, people can order online, pay for it, and have it delivered to them if they don't want to pick it up. Things are accelerating so much faster, and sometimes individuals want different results, but they're doing the same thing. So here's the thing. Shift or be shifted by shift. So what is it that I need to do to shift my thinking, to shift my uh, behavior, to shift what I'm feeling in order to create a new result? So when you see differently, there are three questions, and I hope all of you have the book, Shift Your Brilliance, three questions that you will find on page number 47, and they're right under uh, the shift, uh, right under See Differently, step one. And what I want to invite you to do as you begin to go through this series, make sure you take this assessment that starts on page 47, because it will allow you to locate where you are. So here's the first question. I consistently try to do things differently. That's the first question. Do you, from time to time, attempt to do something that you haven't done before? Because on an adventure, that means you're going in a fresh direction in those core areas of your life. And you are attempting to say, I'm going to work out or I'm going to get up early. I'm going to read a book before I go to bed. I'm going to make sure I make that, that call. I'm going to try to do something differently. So when I see differently, I have to start with what are my behaviors? What are my habits? 
What are my actions? All right, here's the second question. I willingly step outside of my comfort zone. How often do you attempt to do something that is uncomfortable? I, I'll never forget a few weeks ago, uh, I was invited to go and to uh, basically go to this simulated experience where you put on a flight suit and you literally, they, they have the air blow up and you are literally flying and it's inside a closed container. And I had never done anything like this before. And they give you the specific instructions on how to just relax and allow the air to blow you. And, and there's a, a person in there that's, you know, helping you in this entire experience. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? I was totally out of my comfort zone. And they got this on video. And you could tell <laughs> that I was struggling. <laughs> but here's the thing. After doing it one time, I went back again. And probably about the fifth time, I said, I'm going to embrace this. I can do it. It was totally out of my comfort zone. But when I began to see differently by hearing what was being shared and following the instructions, everything began to shift. Please make this note. Could it be that SHIFT, S-H-I-F-T, stands for C, how I fit tomorrow. See how I fit tomorrow. Just think about that just for a moment. I want to go to the third question. And the third question is, I have a clear picture in my mind about what my future looks like. I have a clear picture in my mind about what my future looks like. So when you start an adventure, you start with the end in mind. Because if it's foggy in here, it's cloudy out there. So what's the picture in your mind? I want to give you five practical insights to really help you think about how do I begin to clear my mind as I launch into this adventure? So I want to invite you to go to page number 65, 65, if you have the book, uh, Shift Your Brilliance. And if you don't, just ask your neighbor, can I look on yours? Page 64, correction, page 64. Can I look in your book? All right. For those of you who don't have the book, not to worry. I know that you'll get the book soon. I want to walk you through the five steps to see differently and clear your vision. And part of why I share this with you, as you know, the Bible says that without a vision, people perish. In some translations, it will say, and they go backwards. And everything that we want to do is to move forward. So if we're going to move forward, what are the five steps to really think about uh, as we consider Isaiah 61, arise and shine, allowing that brilliance to come through so that we can have the breakthrough. And step number one is to see it. So I'll never forget, I'm working at Disney, and I knew that there was more in me. There, there was more for me to do. But for whatever reason, I, I sold myself short. I worked hard enough to keep a job. And I did just enough to keep from getting fired. I'm going to say that again. I worked hard enough to do a job. And I did everything possible to keep from getting fired because I didn't have a vision beyond the job. Here's when you know it's time to make a U-turn. If you're supposed to show up at work and you show up late, if you're supposed to go to lunch and you take two hours, if you are supposed to uh, leave work at a certain time, and obviously uh, many of us perhaps have worked remotely, right? And we decide that we're going to leave early. Could it be it's time for a U-turn? Uh, do things annoy you? Do things get on your last good nerve? Do things, uh, for whatever reason, just rub you the wrong way? Is it time 
for you to make a U turn. So if I'm going to see it, it starts with understanding where do I see myself going uh, as I go through this adventure. Here's the thing what you want wants you. You would never have a desire to have a clear vision unless you know what you want. Here's the, here's the amazing thing. If you went to the airport right now there in Jamaica and you went to the ticket counter because you had booked a flight, they will ask you for your license or passport. And because you have booked the flight in advance, the flight is leaving from where you currently are you're going to depart so that you might arrive. So when you think about clearing your vision and seeing it as you go through this adventure, what is your destination? Where, where, where do you want to land? Where do you want to be spiritually, physically, emotionally, socially, financially? Do you see it? Now here's the challenge and here's your homework. Write it down. If you think it, ink it. I'm going to say it again. If you think it, ink it. I'll never forget years ago, I had just left Disney and I'm sharing the stage with the late, great Dr. Stephen Covey, who wrote the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And Dr. Covey said something that day that I'd never heard before. He said, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spirit beings having a human experience. And when he said it, something shifted in me and I was like, whoa. And when I begin to see myself as a spiritual being, as, as a person who loves God, all of a sudden I begin every day to see myself through that light. Now, I didn't get it right uh, all the time uh, because there was still a little hood in me, a little ghetto in me, right? But I had to work through that to say, I see myself, no matter what the headlines are, I see myself in a better light and that enabled me to leave Disney. Here's the second step I want you to, to capture, and you'll see it. Write it. The picture that stays in your mind will happen in time. So when I write it down, here's where I'm going. Here's what I'm going to accomplish. You write it down. Here's what the research says. The research says individuals who write down their goals of where they intend to be they create the better possibility of making it happen at least 42% more of the time because it's written down. Number three, read it. Now, when I talk about reading what you have uh, seen, what you have written, when you begin to read it, you are internalizing it more with inside of you to say, oh my goodness, this is where I'm going. This is what I'm doing. No matter what happens on this adventure, I am evolving into a better person, a person that has the light, love, and light of God that's coming through me. All right, here's the fourth step. Say it. When you begin to say what you see, because you have written it down and you've read it. When you begin to say it, you take ownership of it. When you take ownership of it, it will shift your behaviors and your habits. I'll never forget years ago, I'm at a seminar and the facilitator said, you don't decide the future. You decide your habits and your habits decide the future. The secret, he said, to owning your adventure, I'm paraphrasing, is in your daily routine. So when I create the daily routine to say what I see, what I have read, what I have written, I am shifting from the inside out. I am making the U-turn, the U, Y O U, the U-turn to say, that's where I'm going. So I have to say it. Every time I say it, everything in the universe begins to conspire on my behalf 
to bring to pass what I say. But it happens from the inside, then it's manifested on the outside. And here's the fifth step. The fifth step is act it. So when I understand how to act as if, what does that look like? If you're really going to maximize this adventure, I want to invite you to rehearse the future in the present. When I talk about rehearsing the future, every single day and every single evening before your head hits the pillow, the breakthrough comes when you begin to see it, you begin to write it, you begin to read it and say it and act it, that's rehearsing the future. And when you are rehearsing the future in the present, when you arrive into the future, you call it today. But everything that you did yesterday, the choices, the decisions, the behaviors, the habits, the U-turn, everything you've done meets you in the future and says, welcome, we've been waiting for you. So here's the question. Are you ready to shift? Are you ready to understand, see how I fit tomorrow starting today? That is the adventure that you are on as you break through to brilliance. I turn it back over to the host. All right, let's just thank Simon T. Bailey. If you're online, let's see some hearts. Let's see some love. Simon, on behalf of the Universal Center of Truth for Better Living, the board of directors, um, and all of us here, we want you to know we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we're sending you and your family, your company, all the love uh, more than you know. Thank you for loving us enough to share these brilliant reminders with us. And now that you have given to us, may now the grace of the Divine One, the Holy One, go ahead of you and bless you not only today but in the days ahead. God bless you. Thank you. Let's give him some more love. Simon T. Bailey. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other words, Simon? Uh, because we're about to sing a song here. I, listen, I so appreciate this time and just remember on this adventure, make the U-turn. That's how you break through. You turn. You turn, I turn. Amen. Let's give him some more love and let's clap ourselves for the courage to, to simply take the journey. And we know it all starts with us. Musicians, over to you.
victim of selfish kind of love. It's time that I realize that it's long with no homes, not a nickel to loan. Could it be really me pretending that they're not alone? Oh, well, oh, deeply scarred, somebody's broken heart and a washed out dream. They follow the pattern of the wind you see, cause they got no place to be. That's why I'm starting with me. Give the music team a round of applause. Come on. design expert, Rose Morales, our webmaster, and uh, there's a name missing, but I know it's Chris McHale, Art of Arrangements, that so beautifully puts together our set designs. Thank you so much. Conroy Wilson, our executive producer, I, Fidel Williams, production manager, Michael Hogate, creative support, Nadine Newsom, communications director, Sohail Powell, social media, coordinator, Jermaine McKenzie, our board chair and adventurer sharer for today, Jamar Royal on camera, Orlando Scaife, our live stream coordinator, Mario Lindo, our audio engineer, Michael Sean Harris, our multimedia production expert. Amen? Amen? Anybody else? Give the whole team a round of applause. Our love ambassadors, Angela and Miss Yvonne, thank you ever so much. There's somebody else, but I don't know who it is behind the mask. Who is it, Sherry? Sherry, Sherry, thank you so much. So our love, bas love ambassadors are coming forth now to accept your gifts, your tithes, your love offering, your building support, your special projects, however you have come prepared to give today. For our virtual audience, if you look at the on screen, you'll see many different opportunities to give if you're here in Jamaica, even if you are outside of Jamaica. We bless and thank you for every single gift. We thank you, we bless you. We know that every gift comes from God and God inspires you and you move on the inspiration that you receive. And therefore we bless you and we thank you. 
thank you, God. We take together our offertory blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies this offering. God is the source, gives abundantly. I receive gratefully and give again generously. And so it is. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing now. Thank you, Lord, for every little thing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for you made me sing. Come on and sing along, sing along. Blessed Sunday, everyone. How is everyone doing? It's so it's such a nice feeling to see everyone in the sanctuary and welcome everyone online as well. Welcome to AIF 2022. We are going to be shifting into our brilliance. Yes, we are going to be moving into our brilliance. Yes, where we will break through into our brilliance. And on this Sunday. We give thanks and pray, not only for a clean and beautiful heart, but we give thanks for a clean and beautiful and shifting into an evolved sanctuary and yard space as well. And this, it is in this capacity that I am here to provide you with announcement where with our reverend, our spiritual leader and members of the board, we will be embarking as we look into tomorrow as we move into a U-turn to uplift our sanctuary and our space, we will be uh, embarking on some project on which, in, in which you will be invited. Po persons in the sanctuary, persons online, persons locally, and persons overseas as well. Whatever kind or, 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 or cash you are able to contribute. So we cash preferably, the board they, they say. So we are inviting all the creatives. We are in inviting all the artists, we are inviting all the, 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 the landscapes and constructions and specialists to embark with us and I'm going to tell you what it's about now. We have embarked on a project where we'll be renovating the sanctuary in terms of floor boxes and this is on the heels of a big project that was undertaken and spearheaded by our former board member Conroy B. Wilson who did such a brilliant job in shifting the offices from Seymour Park to Collins Green. But of course, we cannot leave it dry and bare and so so so, as we would say. We want to furbish and put some signage there, and also we would want to, want to put some floor boxes and renovate the pavements. So persons who think that you are able to assist in that capacity, please see our incumbent uh, board chair, Jermaine McKenzie. This will be led with, by him and Sean Ashman, a former board member, who will also be renovating, guess where? the school, the church, um, youth wing of the church as well. So we want to welcome them back as we have welcomed you with this nice, beautiful sanctuary in their wing. We want to give it a facelift as well. We would also like to pave the pavement outside so when you come in a nice car like Jermaine has bought earlier, we want you to drive in and make it feel good as well. And some of us wear very expensive shoes, so we don't want the heels to stick in it as well. So we want to encourage persons for the pavement and so see any member of our board um, and you can also speak with uh, Conroy B. Wilson as well. 
So, we want to see you see me for these, you know, in terms of the bench and trees and the fountain outside. We want to uplift it. I think this is from when we just moved here over a decade ago. But we want nice, pink, beautiful flowers. If we could a little red, a little purple, a little green, a little orange outside to represent adventures in faith, that will be good as well. So, persons who have the potted plants at home, feel free to bring them. We welcome them. I would also like to be, do a big shout out to Wade Dwayne Barnaby, our longtime church attendee who is coming to us from England. He has actually started in the landscaping, so you can see him and assist with him. He actually brought some nice plants from his yard. So when you come by Christmas, the place looking nice and flowery. Yes. So, let your light shine. Let's share your talent. Duane, see Duane there, he's in the sanctuary today. Big up yourself, Duane, thank you so much. All voluntary. And please volunteer, if you don't volunteer, when you see me, I'll just write down your name, because of course it's a collective effort to ensure we enjoy our sanctuary, both individually and collectively as your church member. My name is Philip Earl, it was nice speaking to you, and I will see you at the front there. Have a good Sunday. Thanksgiving service for the life of Les Campbell will be held on Wednesday, November 4, 2022 in Westmoreland. Youth ages 10 to 17 are invited to join the UC Truth Youth Ministry as they continue with their Seven Seas of Success lesson series at their new start time of 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Jamaica Time today. Today's C is Confidence. Meeting ID 827-4959-6303. Passcode UC Truth. Please remember to support Sister Marine and our street side ministry with donations of toiletries, towels, non-perishable food items, or financial donations. All donations directly support persons experiencing homelessness. Drop your donations to our administrative office. See the Parliament of the World's Religions website for the registration rates of the 2023 gathering in Chicago. Remember, persons associated with New Thought organizations are registering using a link unique to their organization. Contact the church office when you are ready to register. Place Noonday Inspiration on your calendar and join us on Facebook Live Monday through Saturday as we explore the daily inspiration reading for the day. Speaking of the daily inspiration, the September-October issue is available for purchase in the bookstore. Obtain your copies today. Immediately after service today, a prayer chaplain is available to pray with you in the virtual prayer room on Zoom. Meeting ID 827-4959-6303. Passcode UC Truth. The prayer room remains open for half an hour. If you wish to receive the weekly newsletter that contains the latest happenings in our ministry and a link to the Sunday service, please email the church and request the Ponderings newsletter. The new term of classes has begun. Please look out for the flyers and registration link on all our social media platforms. This concludes the announcements. Hasn't it been great? Just give yourselves a round of applause. How good it is to be able to make a U turn, a Sheila turn, whatever your name is, and go in the direction that you really want to go in. And how great it is to be able to support you in doing that. If you have any questions about the classes that are being offered this semester, Nadia, stand up. This is our adult education director, Make sure you see her. And then the teachers in the sanctuary of specific classes. What's the name of your class, Jean? Bible. I know you're doing Bible 4, but that's a set group. And Okay, Bible 5, uh -huh, which is New Testament. Practical metaphysics. Stand up, Jean. This is the teacher. If you want to know anything about that, go directly to the teacher. And I'm teaching 12 Powers on Wednesday morning at 7.30. Conroy, you're teaching Basic Truth 2 on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Basic Truth 2, that's one of the core courses to understand what we teach in this ministry. Wednesday night, I'm early morning, 7.30, your 12 spiritual powers, and my class only started last week. 
Dr. Jean, Practical Metaphysics, Tuesday, what time? At 6 p.m. Nadia, what are you doing? Discover the Power Within by Eric Butterworth. Oh, wow, that's a great book. Um, and what night is that? Mondays at 6. So remember, we are a teaching ministry, and therefore get into a class and stay on track. I see faces in the sanctuary. We haven't seen Myrna. We haven't seen you since 2020. I heard your lovely voice. Well, I've talked to you, but God bless you. It's good to see you. And Shannette, is that you? Please pick up your master certificate from me, please. Thank you so very much. She graduated earlier in the year. Who else is here? Marcia. Thank you. Welcome back, Marcia. Haven't seen these people since 2020. Who else? Sh Cheryl? Sheree McDonald Russell? Lord have mercy. Since 2020. God bless you. Maritza, is that you? But you've been doing community work. I, we see you. I, I know. Uh, who else? Angela? I've seen Angela a million times, but hi, Angela. How you doing? Who else? Barbara McGaugh? Lord, behind the mouth. I didn't see you, Barbara. God bless you. Good. Everybody, your family is okay? Noreen, how is your mother? I wake up with her on my heart. How is she doing? No, man, you got to do, you know, you promised me something. And please, thank you so much. We hold in our hearts our dear brother, Les Campbell. Uh, I don't even remember. I think I just spoke to Les last Sunday. And uh, I am grateful and thankful for Les. So my outfit today is in memory of Les. He, this is one of his designs. And uh, I shall miss him greatly. Uh, just a wonderful person. God bless you. Thank you so much. The service will be on November the 4th, according to his niece. And that's all the detail we have right now in Westmoreland. Um, so as more information becomes available, we'll let you know. Stan Stacy Francis, his dad's service is coming up in November as well. All of that's in the Ponderings newsletter. Remember, if you don't get the Ponderings newsletter, it's a weekly newsletter that comes out from our office that shares with you it does like a quick recap of the Sunday service. So if you missed a Sunday service, it even gives you a link to the service uh, if you want to go back and look at it. And if you've watched it and you need to go back, all of that comes in the newsletter in the, in the ponderings. And all you have to do is email the church or tell one of the love ambassadors, I need ponderings, or call the church and say, I need the ponderings newsletter, and we will get that to you. Or email and say, send ponderings and give us your email address and you've got it amen it's open to everybody no matter where you are no matter where you are in the world we thank you and uh we're looking forward next week is spiritual unfoldment and what color are we wearing blue. we're wearing or carrying something blue to remind us that we are spiritual beings and as we close every week there will be a team leading adventure in faith Today, the team is the Board of Directors. Would the Board of Directors of the Universal Center of Truth please stand? Board of, they may be outside because their project today is preparing refreshments for you. Can you believe it? So onlineers, if you were here, you get some refreshments, but I guess we'll have to eat your refreshments, amen? And so it's wonderful and we thank the board of directors. They also decide who the sharer is, and then they chose the two board members to be their host for the week. So other leaders, okay, you know what to do, all right? Now next week is spiritual week, and that's my week. I'm taking that week. So I know all of you wanna be on my team, <laughs> and you are welcome to be on my team. And uh, so, yes, let's do that. And we have a project. I already have one in mind, and I'd like to unveil it next week with your help. And it's going to be easy for us to do. And so I want you to let's just have a little powwow and talk about uh, next week, Sunday. Uh, and then the next week, you know, what we'll do next week is just introduce all the team leaders. Amen? And so if you say, but you know, Rev, I need to be a team leader. 
we are open and receptive. Amen? All right. And so the grace of God is already with us. Please stand. And just know, God's peace abides. And it belongs to each one of you. I will keep you in perfect peace. It's the promise. But you've got to keep your mind stayed on the one who is the only one. The one who is in charge. The one who made you in the beginning and shaped you even as you were in your mother's womb. Keep your mind and heart stayed on God's presence that you may discern that which is good, that which is holy, that which is sacred, and that which is for you. And if it's for you, it cannot be unfor you. So God, we just thank you for all the gifts that you have already given. We open ourselves and we prepare and we make the U-turns that are necessary to receive the gifts that you have already given. In the power of the living Christ, we pray. And let it be so. And so it is. Amen? Amen. Now, you ought to turn to somebody and just wink. Come on, come on, turn to somebody. Now, only in the sanctuary. If you get winks when you're outside, go into your car. Reverend Sheila got nothing to do with that now. It's a way of being, saying, I see you, and thank you for being here. So close us out, musicians. You've been defeated before. That won't be your story no more. I know you have failed before. That won't be your story no more. Oh. Truth Live. If you've been inspired, please like, follow, and subscribe to all our social media pages.
Mm-hmm.